Hi guys. So this video isn't going to be easy at all. I can already feel it in here. In my last video um, where I did a quick update on my life, I talked to you guys very quickly about my son. And today I'm going to tell that story. July 19th, 2016, excuse my cat. Um, July 19th, 2016, I had missed my period, and what else do us women do when we miss our period? We take a pregnancy test. I had like a little, like the cheap little 88 cent Walmart test, um, so you know, I took the test, and... I remember squinting like I saw a line and I was like no it was like 6 in the morning I was up getting ready for work and um, I was like no that's I'm seeing things like it's 6 in the morning I didn't fully wake up yet so I had a first response um, like an extra first response and I took that test and the first response was just so like the line was unmistakably there like it was there was no denying that there was that line there it was a positive test and I just remember standing in the bathroom and I'm like what this, this can't be real there's absolutely no way I look at my calendar I'm like how when how and it said that I ovulated the 4th of July and I'm like it makes sense okay it, it all added up in my head um I was pregnant I couldn't it took so long for it to hit and then when it did hit anxiety hit and it hit hard because I remembered that my pregnancy before I had lost I um called my OBGYN and I made an appointment with them and they brought me in, so I found out I was pregnant July 19th, I want to say like the middle of August, I can't remember the exact date, but it was like the middle of August sometime that they brought me in for an appointment, I think it was like seven or eight weeks at that point, and um, I went for my appointment, and everything was fine, they did my blood work, they did an ultrasound, the baby had a heartbeat, and they had given me a due date of March 28th. Um, they then gave me like a referral to the high risk doctor, who was actually my same high risk doctor as Zoe. So I was a little bit apprehensive and I kind of just told them like, you know, I don't really have a good feeling about seeing this doctor, you know, is there someone else that you could recommend? And I let them know, you know, like, this doctor never wanted to do a cerclage. He never wanted to give me my project. He never wanted to do anything. And I just didn't feel comfortable seeing him. And they told me to just go and see him. And then I would come back and meet like where I was going for my doctor. It was like a practice of five. And there was like one doctor that was like the highest one that had like the full like say. So they were like, go meet with the high risk and like let us know how it goes. So I did that. I met with high risk. And of course, High risk and I didn't agree on anything. Um, I he knew everything that happened. I reiterated everything that happened to him with Zoe and then with Emma. Um, Emma was born at 35 weeks, three days. My water had broken. Um, just backtracking to when I was 19 weeks with Emma, my cervix was shortening. Um, I was diagnosed when I was pregnant with Emma with an incompetent cervix. Same with Zoe. At 17 weeks, my water broke. Um, my cervix was three centimeters dilated. Um, and so now, I'm oh, sorry, I'm like all over the place. With Emma, I was on progesterone suppositories from 19 weeks to, till she was born 35 weeks. With Zoe, um, I had to change doctors because of my health insurance. It had changed from Emma to Zoe. When I told my doctor, the same doctor with Zoe, 
everything I was on with Emma, he's like, no, I don't think you need that. So here we are, I'm pregnant with Isaac. And I was t telling him, like, I, I, would ra I would much rather feel comfortable being on progesterone. I would like to get a transvaginal cerclage. I would like for all of these things. And he's like, no, you know, you're a miscarriage. It was just, you know, something that just happens. You have two healthy babies and we don't, we don't, we don't need to do that. I don't think you need to do that. Now I'm like eight, I was like eight or nine weeks at this time. I'm like, get yeah, up. No. I remember going home and I like talked it over with everybody and they're like you need to do what you feel in your heart is right so I called my doctor's office and I talked to like the head doctor over the phone and I explained to him everything I explained to him my pregnancy with Aubrey my pregnancy with Emma my pregnancy with Zoe and he said I'll do this for Clash. he said I'll do it okay so it was September 20 third fourth fifth one of those days i went in uh to the hospital to have my cerclage placed i had a transvaginal cerclage placed and i remember being in the recovery room and the doctor came and he said that my cervix i was only 11 weeks pregnant my cervix was already starting to open so he was happy he did the cerclage and i remember just feeling so relieved that like i fought to get this cerclage placed because I, I needed it you know so that was the end of September October um, they didn't put me on progesterone they said because I had the cerclage place they didn't want to put me on progesterone I fought and fought and fought they didn't want to give it to me October came and went it was pretty like normal nothing like to report on um, and then I had my 19 week scan I think it was my anatomy scan, my level two, um, I think it was November 1st or 2nd. Um, everything was perfect. The cerclage was holding, my cervix was nice and long, um, the baby looked great, you know, found out that we were having a boy, actually found out we were having a boy in October. But we confirmed in November, that November appointment, that the baby was a boy. Um, everything, everything was great. They're like, you are, everything's looking amazing, you're holding on. And I felt, I felt good because I had surpassed that 17 week mark with, that I lost Zoe at. I had passed it. I was now, I think it was 18 or 19 weeks. So I felt like a little like, I can breathe now. Everything is fine. You know, everything, everything's good. The end of November, I think it was November 28th, I want to say. I had the most excruciating, excruciating stomach pain. And I just, I, I didn't know, like it didn't feel like contractions, it didn't feel like labor, it, it was just some excruciating pain. I kind of monitored it and it was late, it was late at night when it started and I said, okay, I'm gonna make an appointment first thing in the morning next day first thing in the morning I went to the doctor's office they took me right away knowing my history they literally took me in right away they um, did a, a non-stress test um, and they said that everything looked good like I wasn't contracting or anything on the monitor um, the baby's heartbeat was fine and then they sent me in for an ultrasound and when I went in for ultrasound, that's when they found that just a few weeks ago, November 2nd or 1st, whichever day it was, my cervix was like four, what are they, centimeters? Like, it, it was measuring 4.3 long or whatever. And now my cervix was 1.2. So my cervix just completely went um, in those three weeks. So my doctor came in um, and she asked me to, from the, she did like an ultrasound of her own just to make sure that the ultrasound text measurements are correct. And then she asked me to go sit with her in her office. And she's like, I don't know what's going on with your cervix right now. Like the cerclage is still there, but we're losing, we're losing your cervix. Like your, your cervix is shortening and it's shortening fast. So she um, calls over to the hospital and she let them know that I was coming and she said, you know, just go straight there. They know that you're coming, just go straight there. So I went over to the hospital and they kept me, 
I want to say it was a, a day or two or I think it was a day or two that they kept me and um they started me on progesterone suppositories now they're like all right we're gonna put you on progesterone suppositories we're gonna monitor you and they wanted to make sure that like I wasn't progressing at all so they kept me and then they discharged me it was like a pretty quick stay at this point I want to say I was like 22 weeks well he, yeah I think it was like 22 weeks um, this was two years ago, so I'm sorry if like my dates are, are everywhere and I'm honestly just trying to keep it all together so my dates and everything might be everywhere. Um, they discharged me, I went home, they told me I was on like strict bed rest, no lifting, no sex, no no nothing, bed rest. Um, so I went home and that's what I did. A day later, or it might have even been that same day. Um, my girlfriend came out, my friend, uh, Yovali, Yovali, if you're watching, hi, um, she came out to come and help me, you know, just with the laundry, with my kids, she just, she was coming to just help me, her, my sister, my brother, um, everyone just, they, they were just coming to my house to try and make things as easy as possible, like, they were gonna come cook a couple of meals, come do the laundry, like, they were just coming to, they were just so amazing, um, and I remember I called Yovelli, she was on her way, and I was like, do you mind, like, stopping at Burger King and getting me a Whopper? Like, I really just want a Whopper. I don't know why. She was like, all right. So she comes over. She has my Burger King in her hands, and she just stops, and she looks at me. Like, I'm back in pain. I'm, I'm in a lot of pain again, but I'm monitoring it because the pain had just started. And I, I didn't want to just, like, run up and jump to the hospital. Like, I was monitoring it. It literally had just started. She looks at me and she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I, I don't know what's wrong. Um, like this pain, it just, it literally just started back up. She's like, all right, she's like, try to eat something. I took one bite and I just completely lost my appetite right after that. I was like, no, I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. So I, I went upstairs to go to the bathroom and when I went and I wiped, I started spotting. Right then and there, I lost it because it was the same thing with Zoe. When I went to the bathroom with Zoe, I wiped and there was, I was spotting on this issue and I just started crying. Yovelli ran up the stairs. She's like, what's wrong? I was like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm bleeding. I don't, I don't know what's going on. She's like, let me see. I'm like, I'm not showing you my blood. She's like, let me see. I show her and she's like, we're taking you back to the hospital right now. So, um, they call my doctor to let me, let the, they call my doctor to let my doctor know like we're bringing her back just so that like they knew that I was coming um my doctor was like yes bring her bring her in like um so I get to the hospital and they check me they put me on the monitor and she's like you're contracting and I didn't feel anything like I was just it, it didn't feel like contractions it was just like pain in my pelvis like it didn't feel like a contraction at all she's like you're contracting and she's like I'm gonna check you she didn't want to check me because I was only like 22 weeks she's like I didn't I don't want to check you check me and I was a centimeter dilated um the hospital that I was going to they're like we don't know what's happening we're transferring you to a hospital that has a level four NICU this hospital only has a level two we're transferring you to um a better hospital now this hospital was 30 minutes west of where I was um, so they told me they were going to give me they gave me the first round of the steroid to help his lungs um, if you guys have ever you get this you get the shot in your butt and it burns really really bad really really bad um, and the nurse came in and it was so weird I'm the nurse that came in to administer my shot was the same nurse that helped me deliver Zoe and she remembered me um and she's like don't worry like I'm gonna pray we're gonna make it through this you know we'll see you we just want to get like let's get you to 32 weeks like let's go to 32 weeks you'll be fine I'm like okay like I'm holding on you know like you everything will be okay so um Yovelli and Richie were both with me and Yovelli goes back to my house to tend to my, my brother and my sister I think um we're at back at my apartment with my kids Yovelli went back to my apartment to go help them out some more and like update them with what was going on i went in the ambulance to the other hospital and then richie followed the ambulance um as well 
Um, so I get to the other hospital and they, now my doctors that I had were now not affiliated with this hospital. So I had a whole new team of doctors who didn't know anything about me other than what my doctor told them. They just knew that I was coming in as a high risk patient and, um, that my, there was a chance my son could be born. Um, so now it's December, it's December now. He was born December 10th, um, at 24 weeks, four days. So at this point I'm like that, I'm like 23 ish weeks and they have NICU come in and like the entire like head staff of NICU, like respiratory, cardiology, um, just like ev everyone imaginable from NICU come in and they sit me down in my room and they tell me, you know, one day in the womb was equivalent to two days in the NICU. And they said that at 23 weeks, he there was a chance of him being viable, 24, a little bit more, but the closer that, the, more, the longer that I kept him in the womb, that the healthier it would be for him. Um, so they just told me that if he was born, he'd have a 40% chance of surviving the birth. And um, just to do my best to keep him in. I then met with like my whole new team of my doctors and they gave me that day I was on like magnesium sulfate I was on antibiotics I was on so many different so I can't remember I was on so many different medications I remember a day later they gave me like the second dose of that steroid um, but I was on I started off in labor and delivery I was there for about two days um, they were able to kind of slow things down and then I went to antepartum um I was in antepartum for like so I was admitted this third fourth fifth I was in antepartum for another three days and then I remember so he was born on a Saturday Thursday night um so I had to do stress tests daily and like because he was so small I couldn't move when they were doing the stress test so like they put the thing and then like they'd have to monitor his heartbeat so like I couldn't move and I remember Thursday night I was doing my stress test and I was in so much pain again and like because of the way that I was laying to accurately read his heartbeat like I called my nurse in and I'm like I don't know if it's the position that I'm laying in or or what but I'm just super uncomfortable and she's like are you in any pain I was like I'm in a little bit of pain but mostly I'm just super uncomfortable um and I showed her where the pain was and she tried to readjust me and she's like all right let's try to lay this way so she tried me on my other side and she's like let's lay this way I tried that and then I called her again and like nothing is helping I'm like the pain is just getting worse nothing's helping so she called my doctor in for my doctor to check me and she checked and I was five centimeters dilated now at this point she's like we have to get you back over to labor and delivery now um I'm like okay it's like 10 11 o'clock at night they bring me back over to labor and delivery and they tell me now my cerclage is still in place like they haven't taken it out because my cerclage is holding me together um they said that they had to start monitoring the, the cerclage and where his head was and how fast I was dilating because if the cerclage snapped, it was going to tear my cervix. So, yeah, right? If it popped, it was going to... So they had to watch. And if, for those of you that don't know what a cerclage is, it's a stitch in my cervix that... Um, so your cervix is round and it's a stitch that it goes from one end to the other and then one end, something like that. And it's literally a, a stitch that holds you closed so that you don't open um that was Thursday night Friday came and Thursday I got an epidural that I remember because I was in so much pain and they thought for sure he was coming Thursday Thursday into Friday I got an epidural in the middle from like so in the middle of the night Thursday into Friday um they made the decision to cut my cerclage out um, because they didn't want, they didn't know what was going to happen. So they made the decision to cut out the cerclage and right from there I went from five to seven. 
um and then shortly after that so like friday afternoonish, i think it was i have to go i made updates on my facebook about this and i don't remember anything right now um friday afternoon or friday night my water broke um like it started off as just like a trickle and they kind of just like left it there and my water broke um saturday morning it was my 29th birthday he was born on my birthday um saturday morning they came in they checked me i went from seven to eight and the doctor looked at me and she said more than likely you're having a baby today and i just remember saying I'm like really today it's, it's my birthday and she looked at my chart and she's like oh happy birthday um i went from seven to eight and they kept the I think it was the magnesium that they were giving me really like put me out of it like I was out of it and I remember like I called my sister and I told her I said the doctor said we're having a baby today so you're gonna have to leave work she was at work and I was like you have to leave work you have to come right now because I can't do this without you and I remember her like responding to me she's like you told me you didn't want anyone there when you were giving birth and I was like yeah forget forget all of what I said then I'm, I'm just talking now so my sister came she left work um and she came and I just remember being out of it like I was out of it and my nurse went um she remember she tapped me on the shoulder and she said honey I'm gonna go take my lunch break here's so-and-so I don't remember what her name was she's like here's so-and-so she's gonna watch you for the next hour while I go take my lunch I'm like all right hi hi so-and-so and I went right back to sleep like this medication put me out of it I turned over to look at my sister and Richie and they were playing on their phones or whatever and I rolled my eyes and it turned back over to go back to sleep in that same minute I looked back at my nurse and I said it's time and she's like what do you mean I said it's time she's like no you just told me like you were fine I said it's time now like I can feel it it's time so she calls the doctor and she's like you know she's saying she's having a lot of pressure like it's time the doctor comes checks me and they're like she's 10 centimeters and the baby's head is right there like she it's it's time to go so they had to page my nurse back for whatever reason so she has to come back from her lunch and now they had to page NICU and so I was in the smallest little labor and delivery room I have a full team I have two nurses um two doctors and then the entire NICU team comes in because they have to be ready for him like the minute that he comes out and I remember like I was pushing through my contractions and um the pain just got like it was so bad and the, everyone's yelling they're like push breathe push breathe I I was in such a blur I can't even remember half of what was going on um I just remember crying and crying and crying to my sister I was like I can't do this I can't do this and she was like yes you can I remember like the doctors yelling at me they're like the baby's right there you gotta push and I'm like in my head the last time I pushed the baby out was Zoe and I'm just panicking and I'm like I can't do this Aubrey and Emma were both c-section so I'm like I, I can't do this just take me to c-section like I, I can't do this and they're like no this is the healthiest way for the baby to come out like you just stop panicking you have to do this I'm pushing and pushing and pushing. I think I pushed for like 10 or 15 minutes and he just he wasn't descending and they dropped the bottom half of the bed and th there was like um handlebars like underwear my legs they took my legs off the stirrups and then they gave me like they showed me where these handlebars were because at first I was like holding behind my thighs and the nurse said to me well she looked at the doctor and she's like she's got to push and the she looked at me and she said can you push through no contraction and I'm like I, I don't know like I, I, I don't know I've never you know like Zoe was so little like I don't remember really having to put in like any sort of effort with her and then the girls were c-section and she's like what I want you to do is you're gonna grab those handlebars and you are going to push through your bottom and I just I was hysterical crying at this point and I look at my sister I look at Richie and they're like you you got this like you can do this I'm like all right I took such a deep breath I grabbed those handlebars and I pushed I don't 
remember anything that was going on around me at this point I couldn't tell you all I remember was I felt him come out and my sister said he has black hair and I just remember like laughing because both my girls are blonde and I, I obviously have dark hair and I just remember laughing and I I did it I pushed him out and you know they they gave him right to the uh, NICU team and I'm like he was so little one pound eight ounces and I'm just like I was waiting for like a cry something and I'm like my sister's trying to keep an eye and I'm like don't look at me like peek over listen to what they're saying like what's going on with him and um they're trying to like deliver like anyone that's had a baby the massage to get the placenta out I went to, I was so like don't touch me at this point because I it hurt even though he was one pound eight ounces that hurt now remember he was born Saturday afternoon I got the epidural Thursday night and I remember trying to push that button and they were like honey it's not gonna take into effect like it's two days old and I was just pushing for no reason so I just pushed with no pain meds and they um they intubated him so they got him breathing um once they intubated him and they my, they were able, they let my sister take a quick quick picture and then they're like all right we have to go to the um the NICU and they're like we'll be back in you know two three four hours to let you know you know exactly what his condition is um so now they take my son and I'm in the room and I'm just like everywhere in my head you know that they're telling me to sorry I didn't realize my battery died um they're telling me that I have to deliver my placenta and I'm trying to push and, and do that and um I kind of just sat in labor and delivery for a few hours until they had brought me to postpartum and then I'm still waiting in postpartum just waiting to hear you know like what's going on with him you know is he okay what is his current uh like status a few hours passed by so he was born at 4 27 p.m i think it was maybe eight or nine o'clock when they came to me and um they told me that he was stable but there was A really long road ahead of him um, they told me it was one pound eight ounces 13 inches um, they had successfully intubated him uh, he had his IV they told me he needed a blood transfusion he needed some antibiotics there was just so much that was said they needed to do a brain ultrasound they, they there was a lot they said he was having difficulty breathing um, he was on 100% of 100% oxygen. That was the highest they could go, and he was still having a hard time with that. It was a lot to take in. I asked if I could go see him, and they said that I could. Um, so we went down to NICU to go see him. He was so so tiny. Um, I then went back. It was so hot in the NICU that I started getting sick. So I went back to my room and they told me that one of the best things that I could do for him was to pump. And I said, absolutely, I will do whatever it takes. So I started pumping and they did what was called a colostrum care. So they took a little bit of colostrum and they swabbed his cheeks with it. And I... I started my, my, my journey, my pumping journey for him. Yeah, so that is, that's going to be it for this video. Um, just kind of explaining my pregnancy and, and up into his delivery because I think that if I talk any more about my NICU journey, I... I might not make it through and 
up until his passing. So that is, I guess, the story of my pregnancy. Um, he was born at 24 weeks, 4 days. December 10th, 2016. Um, today is actually December 7th, so he, his second birthday is in 3 days. And that's part of why I feel the timing now is has never been more right um, because as his mother I will continue his his memory his legacy always if you have any questions about like anything in regards to like my pregnancy or the medications that I was on or the saclage or anything I will do my best to remember like everything that I was on it's been about two years well it, it has been two years and again, like the medication just, I was out of it, but I will do my best, like, you know, the steroid and everything to answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, but yeah, my, the next video will be our NICU journey. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.